Hi guys, uh, so this is going to be a really quick uh, shorter video uh, showing how to use the uh, morph uh, surface box uh, combination. And uh, this is a fairly powerful one um, that's easy to customize. Uh, so uh, I just want to show it. The first, uh, before we start though, I need to kind of cover something really quick um, in terms of uh, what we call reparameterizing re uh, surface domains. So. Uh, here's a surface, right? So I'm going to just link it in uh, using the surface container. Um, the surface is intentionally sort of doubly curved, right? Just so that to kind of show that you can deal with these types of situations, right? And um, one thing, uh, if I go to surface uh, eval, so somewhere here, evaluate surface. So this is, uh, a component that for any sort of given surface, so this is kind of going to come in here, um, and we'll give it a UV coordinate, right, to evaluate so we can get both like uh, the point uh, at that sort of UV coordinate or address, the normal direction, right, um, the UV direction, these we actually have, and then uh, the frames. So uh, I'm going to use a component that maybe some of you guys haven't seen before, but um, it is going to be this guy, the MD or multi-dimensional slider uh, under params input. So this slider thing, right, and this is actually what we're going to feed in as the UV. Now to start out here, uh, what you'll see, and this is actually supposed to map to the entire surface, right? Um, what you'll see is it actually, it's going from 0, 0 to 1, 1, right? And this is actually coinciding with our global um, sort of XY and one unit, right, in our global XY, okay? So just kind of maybe recap or, um, you know, try to kind of remind a little bit is that our global, right, has a XY and a Z axis, like X, Y, and Z. Uh, a surface, right, every single surface will have the equivalent, right? So a U, a V, uh, and a W, right? So these are kind of their counterparts, except that the UVW coordinates always follow, right, the surface, regardless if I rotated the surface, then the UVWs would kind of rotate, let's say, with the surface. It's kind of derived from the surface and not the global XYZ. Okay, so that's just a couple, you know, things to uh, uh, remember um, or realize if you don't uh, know that already. And here, what you'll see is that it's actually only moving in the sort of zero to one, right? That's matched with our sort of global X, Y coordinates. Now, so uh, what we want to do is before uh, this goes into the eval surface, or you can do it on the surface itself, depending on your use, um, you can right click here, right? And click on this, reparameterize. And what this does is basically scales um, basically re-addresses, re right, um, or reassigns the UV coordinates uh, to the surface, not based on the kind of global units, but based on the size, right, of the surface itself. And so because of that, what you'll see is that now my multi-dimensional slider, as I kind of move it around, right, is sort of basically perfectly matching, right, di different points on the surface. Now, what you'll also see is that, if I kind of try to scale it over here, is that as I kind of move this side to side, right? Uh, here, it's sort of basically flat, and then it starts to right, angle as I move across the surface, right? So it is basically on you know, the point, right? To the point, and then we will be able to, right? You see the sort of little coordinate system right there, be able to get the normal direction, right? So it's this normal direction that's kind of shooting away um, from the surface, okay? So that's kind of what it gives us. Um, if you want to see a little better, then you can connect a point in, right? So the little blue dot, right, might be able to kind of give you an idea. Um, okay, so this is the kind of normal, right, um, direction. Um, you can actually add, uh, use the sort of uh, vector kind of, uh, of display um, if you wanted to kind of see the direction of the vector. So that's really quick, okay. Now I'm going to kind of move this down and just hide everything, right? Now I'm gonna basically use the same uh, surface component here to you know, basically to link it in, right? Um, this we just kind of did um, earlier. And um, 
what I'm going to bring in first is one of the primary com com components we're going to use today, uh, this, which is the uh, box morph, right, right here. I uh, actually usually forget where this is. Um, Okay, so it's under transform, and there's a whole series of different kind of morph uh, components, surface morph, box morph, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that's the box, box morph. If I kind of look at the inputs, so there's a base geometry, there's a reference box, and there is a target box, right? Now we know when we need a box, right, um, we need to create one or we need something that generates something for us, right? So. I'm going to bring in uh, the bounding box component, right? That gives us a bounding box around whatever geometry uh, that we want to link to. And here you'll see I really kind of briefly model a couple of random things, right? This actually is one that's uh, working off of the ideas of Urban Hauer. Um, if you're not familiar with him and his sculptural walls, um, and this is just a random thing just to kind of see what it does, right? So I'm going to use a geometry container right here. And in this case, because this is only kind of one thing, right? So I'm going to set one geometry to bring it in, okay? And then this will go into our bounding box, right? Which gives us a sort of box around the minimal bounding box around that specific geometry. And at this stage, like these thicknesses really don't matter, right? So you'll see when it's thicker, when it's thinner, okay? All right, now, um, the other thing I need to do is remember our surface, the way our surface is linked in initially, right? Um, it's not uh, kind of reparameterized. So I'm gonna right click here and click on reparameterize. Um, so basically do this in a different way. So it's the same thing, right? Whether you reparameterize it uh, in the front of uh, input or in the container, right, by itself, doesn't really matter. And, um, I'm going to, let's see, uh, there are many kind of divide components, right? But the one we're looking for here is this, which is the divide domain, right? Now surfaces, uh, the sort of addresses right, on a surface can be described uh, as a domain. And this is the domain uh, squared, right? So it's like a two dimensional domain, right? So we're taking the surface domains and dividing it, okay? I'm doing this specifically because it gives us a, a kind of output that's in sort of segments, right? So we can decide our UV um, subdivisions. I'll do one that's a slider, double click zero, let's say smaller than 20 and make two of them. Uh, we'll keep this at nine or 10 for now. Both 10, okay. All right, so this will uh, essentially cut the surface into, right, kind of um, 10 segments in each direction. And then we're gonna link this into a, so this is a surface box component. So it says create a twisted box on a surface patch, right? So there's a input right here, right? That's the base surface, which is this guy. So that's coming in here, right? Uh, the surface domain, which we actually just created using this. So that goes into there and you'll see like automatically there is a visualization of it, right? So essentially we should have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 in each direction, right? So obviously this is kind of modified by changing this. All right. Okay. Now, uh, from here, there's also one more component that actually or input that determines the height of the surface box, right? I do want to kind of mention that, you know, the surface box right here, because it's using the normal direction, right? The normal surface normal vector to kind of extrude these boxes at each point of the surface, right? So that um, it's not a straight extrusion, right? It's not an extrusion or an offset in that sense because you can kind of see some of the, on the same corners, like these are slightly different, right? They're, they're not all parallel, right? They're not parallel. Um, they kind of twist, right? As it goes along, depending on the surface, right? If the surface was flat, then yeah, they will all be perpendicular. But because it's not, it's a doubly curved, 
then each of these are on slightly different vectors. The nice thing is, the nice thing about that is then, you know, the boxes and the edges actually match perfectly, right? Because if you were to have a curved surface like this and you kind of did points on them and you said, well, I'm just kind of looking at the surface and extrude, right? Sometimes depending on your Gaussian curvature, what you might get is something like this where there's a gap in between. Um, excuse the bad mouse drawing, right? Um, oh, actually when it's outward, you would have gaps like here at the ends when you're uh, going inwards, then you'll get a collision right between the boxes. Now this avoids that because its way its method of analysis is based on the normal right direction at each point in the surface and the boxes are connected that way, right? So that's a little slightly different kind of methodology, right? Now, so the height here, I'm gonna do slider smaller than uh, 5.0. So this is a decimal, decimal slider, right? And what this does is that this allows me to control the thickness, right, of the box offset, okay? Now, when I make it longer, you can kind of see even kind of more exaggerated, right, the twisting that's happening on the different points, right? That is kind of a side effect of um, the overall curvature. All right. So as you can see, uh, what we're trying to do here is uh, we're going to, the logic of this is to try to take this as a source box, right, and whatever is sitting inside it and basically map it, right, morph, twist it, right, deform it, uh, and to kind of populate it onto the surface um, using those these sort of surface boxes. Uh, should be fairly straightforward to understand, okay? Uh, and we're actually um, getting close to almost done. So here, uh, this is the box morph, right? And we have here the target, uh, which are these guys, right? The, where we're we moving to, right? So that's the target. This is the reference, which is this red, right, bounding box that we have. So we go from here to here. And then finally, the base geometry, which is kind of what we linked in earlier on here, right? The, the box or the geometry is living inside uh, the bounding box component. So that goes into there. Now, so think for a moment, and then you will get this, right? Um, and so all this green stuff, right, essentially is that matched over here. Right, and depending on how to, depending on how you match your borders, right, it will either slide off or match. Right, so there's a lot of kind of things you can play with here, in terms of how that might work. And again, right, we can if that's too thick, then I can kind of adjust it down. Be aware of what kind of geometry you put in here. Right, the heavier the geometry, especially you know, curved surfaces and stuff like that, it will make this process slower or kind of block it down. So if that's the case, then you can just type in enter, right? So you'd have to go through the entire slider process and lag like crazy, okay? So there's that. All right, now you'll see on the right, I have a different example and we're gonna kind of try to link it in and see what it does. So in the geometry, right? Instead of set one, I'm gonna set multiple, right? And click on both of these. Okay, so what happened? Um, you'll see that only one of the two comes in, right? And just as a, also, and this isn't the main reason, but just as a kind of precaution, right? It's always, it's always kind of good to say, okay, if this is, we're trying to link both of these in together, is what I'm getting now in the bounding boxes, I'm actually getting two separate bounding boxes. They're just overlapping, right? So let's say if I moved this guy out, Right, you will see there's actually two overlapping bounding boxes that were in the same place, right? And only one of them is actually active or working, right? Because out of this, right, out of this list of two bounding boxes, only the first one is actually being used, right, to apply. Because on this side, I have two things, right? On the other side, I have all these, but they're only kind of referencing back to one of them, okay? So this usually, uh, and actually let me undo the rhino move that I did. So they're kind of together. This, I would right click on it and turn it into, instead of per object, right? Uh, make it into a union box. When it's a union box, what it does is that, okay, there's literally only one 
box that encompasses both geometries. And you can do three, four, five, whatever separate geometries if you kind of wanted to do things that way, right? Okay, so that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is that we'll look at the geometry and say, okay, well, these are, right, um, two things um, in, in this uh, kind of container, right? And what I want to do is actually to have them kind of do, do them both, right? Um, do them both, but separately. So this is why I'll, in this sort of geometry input, right, I'm going to right click, right, and graft it. So grafting it um, now actually will get it to do the first one and the second one sort of sequentially. So now both of those are kind of coming in. Now the urban Howard kind of pattern is a bit more um, sophisticated in this in that like it will flip some of these modules. It will flip for kind of every other module. So you'll see that like from the top, it looks like it will right, um, uh, kind of meet. But from the side, you'll see that like the, the ones that are in this direction probably would um, need to be kind of flipped uh, 180 degrees so that some of these corners will actually meet as a you know, simple surface, right? But this is kind of like the first step of kind of understanding like what uh, something like this uh, is able to do. And um, to complete a pattern like this, uh, essentially what you would have to do is a checkerboard, right? A checkerboard that's able to basically say, okay, these guys, this one, this one, this one, the ones on these diagonals, right? Get kind of flipped 180. Um, and that would kind of make the pattern be kind of more seamless. But I think, this this kind of example um, essentially can already kind of demonstrate the uh, basic concept of uh, how something like this uh, might work. Uh, you can also instead of like saying okay this is something that's kind of mapped within a pattern, uh, of course, right? You can also kind of do you know a series of solids. You know if you if you're wanting to do something like like that, even in the absence of a kind of outline, um, let's say set multiple and I'm gonna right because it will kind of create uh, the box on itself and as you see like even just like these curves um, or not these curves but these sort of cylindrical things like actually it will take longer for it to calculate but right now the reason I usually draw the squares because these are uh, well not necessarily squares right but the more square like uh, and I generally try to tweak my subdivision, right? Depending on this, right? This or UV count, uh, depending on the, the proportion, right? Of the surface I'm mapping to. So they're more similar to what you're drawing here, right? Because one thing you'll see going from here to here is that it gets smushed a little, right? Um, proportionally, just because like this square is more square than the, the bounding box rectangle that I get here, right? So if you don't want deformation, right, in terms of the like overall proportions, then you need to try to get the proportions of these uh, these two closer. Right? It doesn't have to be perfect, but you know it should be closer. That being said, the the sort of natural tendency of a surface box kind of morphing um, these sort of commands is that you won't get perfect uh, geometry. Right, things will be warped, twisted. Uh, essentially to kind of get it to map right to the surface. Uh, so there is going to be some deformation that will happen. Uh, just sort of keeping that in mind. Okay, yeah, that's it.